from acute water shortage and famine. It was decided that the time had come to tap this energy for a useful purpose. It was planned to dam the river and create a reservoir from which the head race tunnel would lead water four kilometers through the mountain westwards into the surge well at the beginning of the steep slope on the other side. Here for takeoff would lead the water to the pressure shafts and so down to the powerhouse at the bottom. There the pressure of the falling water would turn turbines to produce electricity. The used water would then flow along the tail race tunnel out of the bowels of the hills into the open valley. A striking feature of this project is that our engineers would turn the entire course of the river westward, resulting in maximum production of power. So one day in 1954, a quiet spot in the Koina Valley is suddenly disturbed. The silence which has reigned for centuries is awakened by the roar of incessant activity. Slowly, in the midst of the constant stir, the plans are taking shape. Sand, metal and stone are used in making concrete for the dam. To get the materials to the actual site, they are loaded into huge buckets and sent swinging away along the ropeway. One of the special features of the dam is that it is going to be built of rubble concrete. This means that there will be large stones mixed with the cement concrete, so less cement will be used and more local material and labor. It is both strong and economical. Block by block, the dam rises to an imposing height. The dam will rise to a height of 105 meters. Behind the dam, water piles up in a reservoir that has submerged 80 villages. The intake channel leads water impounded in the reservoir to the head race tunnel. The gate of the intake tower can be used for letting in the flow of water or shutting of the flow completely. surge well is built. It is a safety device to prevent sudden changes of pressure in the tunnels carrying the water. It is a sheer drop of about 500 meters that makes porphyry an ideal location for the powerhouse. The greater the drop, the greater the forces of water rushing down and the more the power that can be generated. The powerhouse is built underground in the heart of the hills built to save steel and avoid the danger of landslides. This is one of the very few powerhouses of this kind in the east. Its immensity is stupendous. It is a monument of modern India, cut out of the living rock, like the rock temples of old. The valve house is the first of the three great halls of the powerhouse. Each hall is about 200 meters long, and 20 to 30 meters high. In the next hall, the machine hall, the generators are installed. The force of the water on the turbines below will set them rotating and then 500,000 kilowatts of electricity will be generated. Power to meet the needs of the power-hungry city of Bombay 
and the expanding industries of South Maharashtra. To send power to where it is wanted, that is the function of the transmission lines which start from the open air switchyard. It is 241 kilometers to Bombay. From there, two main lines will branch off, one to Bombay, the other to a distributing center for South Maharashtra. Men and machines are active day and night, for they have a huge task to accomplish. It has taken 8,000 men eight years to bring one stage of the plan to reality. The 16th of May, 1962. Sri Yeshwantral Chavan inaugurates the first generator. All over the state, the wheels of industry are set turning. There is abundant power for development that have been held up for many years. Now nothing can hold us back any longer. New horizons of progress are opening up everywhere. Town and country alike are full of a new hope. Parched earth turns into green meadows. Koina has brought long sought for benefits to millions like the rehabilitated villagers of Kutawade. Our fears were short lived. Our new life is a full and contented one. We now have many amenities. We get constant medical attention. There is a good school. We can see our children growing up bright and healthy. So when the new year comes, Goody goes up. It is the traditional Maharashtrian symbol of welcome to the new year. This time, it welcomes a more significant year. Contentment and happiness have come to us. There is a promise of plenty and prosperity.